Welcome back to The Physician Gardener. I am The Physician Gardener and we are here for all things health and wellness. We are continuing our lifestyle medicine video series today. And today's video is on sleep. Most adults will require seven to eight hours of sleep. There is a lot of variability in that. As low as usually six and as high as nine would still be within the range of normal. Benefits of adequate sleep include improved memory, lower blood pressure, better mood, improved concentration, impaired sleep quality and duration, lead to impaired cortisol and glucose levels, leading to decreased insulin sensitivity, which therefore increases your risk of diabetes and metabolic syndrome and obesity. Inadequate sleep also increases the tone of your sympathetic nervous system, which leads to higher blood pressures, which then also leads to increased risk of heart disease. Also, while we're sleeping, our body tends to regenerate and repair. So if you are not having adequate sleep, then you're not getting the full benefits of that repair process. Lack of adequate time to repair will lead to impaired learning, impaired memory, decreased alertness, decreased alertness, and impaired judgment. Inadequate sleep also increases your risk of depression, seasonal affective disorder, premenstrual syndrome, and PTSD. What are some ways you can improve your sleep? First up on the list, use your bed only for sleep and sex. You want to train your body that the bed is for sleep. And so if you're only using your bed for sleep and sex, as opposed to for watching TV, for strolling on your phone, for uh, just, you know, sitting there, um, then your body is more conscious of when I get into bed, I'm either going to sleep or I'm having sex. That's it. You, you also want to minimize light and noise in the bedroom. So basically you want to make your sleep environment as conducive to sleep as possible. At nighttime, you want to throughout the evening, have your body be able to cool naturally. So maybe set your thermostat so that the temperature actually drops in the middle of the night and comes back up in the morning. Um, and then to help you go to sleep, you actually want to be warm when it's time to get in the bed. So either have a warm drink or take a hot shower, um, have your extremities be warm, get in the bed. And then throughout the night, there's a natural cooling cycle that goes with basically the cycle of the sun that um, you want to mimic so that your body is releasing correct levels of melatonin and the other hormones that contribute to sleep. Another tip for improving your sleep would be to make sure you are exposing yourself to light in the morning as much as you can. Um, depending on where you live, that can be kind of hard with work schedules and if you don't have windows, et cetera, et cetera. But whenever you can during the daytime to go outside and get some sun exposure, maybe try exercising in the afternoons when the sun's out, or if you have access to do that in the morning or on your lunch break, you want to expose yourself to daylight so your body's trained like so your body isn't confused about when it's daytime, when it's nighttime, and when it's supposed to be asleep. It's also beneficial to your sleep cycles to limit your caffeine in the evening and afternoon, limit your intake of salty foods and high carbohydrate foods in the evening, as these can have metabolic effects that trigger your body to be more stimulated and therefore don't allow you to ease into that natural sleep pattern. A big one is limiting alcohol at least three hours before bed. A lot of people make an alcoholic beverage to help them go to sleep. However, alcohol messes with your sleep-wake cycle in such a way that maybe it'll help you fall asleep, but a couple of hours later, you are more likely to wake up and then you have trouble going back to sleep or your quality of sleep is just not good because the alcohol is actually impairing your REM sleep. So you are more likely to wake up throughout the night. Another tip to improve your sleep is to have a wind down period before bedtime. You can start this wind down period an hour before bed. And what you wanna do is turn off all of your screens. So that would be your phone, your TV, your computer, anything that's like backlit with blue light. 
um, you want to turn it off so that your mental cycle is like, okay, it's getting dark. Dim the lights in your house. Take your hot shower or warm bath. Drink your cup of sleepy time tea or some other warm, non-caffeinated beverage. Maybe do some mindfulness or meditation practice. If you're religious, you could do your evening prayers or talk to talk to your God, um, that type of thing to kind of settle your mind and settle your body. It's also okay to listen to soft music or read a book um, that's not on a screen um, during this time to just settle into, okay, this is my body's time to calm down from the day, decompress for the, from the day, and I'm going to do this every night before I get into bed as my routine and my body's going to know, okay, now we are calming down so that we can go to sleep. And once you are set into the routine, you are much more likely to fall asleep easier and have better quality of sleep. So those are our tips for sleep. Let us know in the comments if you have any questions, comments or concerns. Um, be sure to like, share, subscribe, hit, hit the notification bell so you can receive alerts whenever I release a new video. And don't forget to follow me at The Physician Gardener on IG. Also, this video is for informational purposes only. Before you make any major changes, make sure to consult your personal physician, who is not me.